Welcome guys to my YouTube channel. Today we're in the UK at the University of Reading. I know it reads like reading, but it's called Reading. The University of Reading in search of actually PhD opportunities. For this particular one, you can move directly from a BSc or a BA straight to a PhD. So you wouldn't even need a master's for the one we'll be looking at. We also have like a database of different kinds of scholarships. PhD scholarships at the university as well, apart from this one I'll be prioritizing in this video. But before we begin, let's have some words from our sponsors. Today we've been sponsored by Uni Accor. Uni Accor is a well-known student accommodation service. It provides affordable accommodation for students in over 10 countries around the world with over 3 million beds. So in case you're looking for accommodation, affordable accommodation, clean accommodation, close to universities, I think you should use this service. And of course, they have different range of accommodation, including studios, including ensuite, shared accommodation, depending on the one you're actually looking for. So no matter what your pocket is, you'd likely find an accommodation that suits you through student ACO. There are also other kinds of services like um, no deposit, um, no university, no payment. There are cashbacks, there are Amazon vouchers, and other freebies you can get from Uni ACO. So please try as much as possible to use their service if you're looking for student accommodation globally and you wouldn't regret it. And of course, the link to Uni ACO will be in the description box of this video. So please look at it and enjoy affordable accommodation for your studies. So let's continue. So this is known as the ESRC, Southeastern Network of Social Sciences Scholarship. And if you scroll down a little, you will see the goodies I'm talking about, the wonderful generous opportunity. Well, first of all, your attention might um, have been caught by this amount of money. Yes, this scholarship covers full tuition and a stipend of over £17,000. That is a lot of money. However, the second line says that is at um, the UK or Republic of Ireland rate. So for a number of international students, this might ring alarm bells because it might mean that this scholarship doesn't cover everything but not so fast. It actually covers everything, even if you're an international student. So let me explain. So if you scroll down a little bit further down, you'll see what I mean about the issue of um, a fully funded scholarship. So look at here. Applications are open to UK and international applicants. Um, ESRC and the University of Reading funding covers tuition fees at the UK Ireland rate for international candidates. Yes, the important part. For international candidates offered this award, the difference between the UK Ireland um, and the international fees will be covered by the University of Red by University of Reading. I hope this is clear. So the scholarship itself would cover home fees for those from the UK, from those from Ireland. However, University of Reading, as stated here, will cover the difference. So you wouldn't have to pay anything. You will still get your 17,000 plus stipend and you also get um, your full tuition covered, sponsored by both ESRC and the University of Reading. So let's go back up there where we began. Another interesting bit I'd like to point your attention to is that you do not need a master's qualification to apply for this studentship. So this is great. You do not need a master's qualification. So just bring in your BSc, usually uh, a 2 one or if possible, a first class and apply. And well, I don't think there's any restrictions for 2 two as well. So why not try your luck as well? You might just get in. So you just can just move directly from a BSc straight to a PhD we or you do not need a master's qualification to apply as you can see here clearly written in their own handwriting so how do you apply for this scholarship so first they invite you to try to make an early application 
an early contact. An early contact means reach out to a supervisor in one of the eligible departments. We'll be looking at the departments shortly. So try to reach out to the supervisors and pitch your idea to the supervisor. So usually you often good to like have like a research question in mind, maybe a one page research proposal or a two page research proposal to what are the appetites of the supervisor. And here you in the second step, you and the supervisor would develop an interesting research proposal together. So in case the word or the term research proposal scares you, not to worry. On my YouTube channel here, just scroll down. This is my YouTube page, by the way. So just scroll down and go to the theme of um, letters of motivation, statement of purpose, research proposal. So here there is a video, simple step-by-step instruction on how to write a research proposal. So just watch the video and got you covered through and through. How to craft a research question and things like that. I think this video would actually help you. And there is another tab at the bottom of this one about preparing for a PhD. It helps you with coming up with research questions and the basic ingredients you need to come up with a research topic for a PhD research. So you have all you need actually on the channel already. So check those materials out. So remember, what are the appetites of uh, a staff, a faculty at one of the eligible departments? Try to pitch your idea to him or her. And by so doing, you might have to write like a very brief research proposal. And then if they like it, it can help you develop it further. So you can put it forward for funding. So that is where you see develop your research proposal with a um, prospective supervisor. So after you've done that, you need to apply for admission for the particular course you intend to apply for. So there's a two-way application process. You apply for the course separately, you apply for the scholarship separately. I think it's also written here. An application for a place on a PhD program is a separate step to applying for this funding. So you have to apply after you've gotten the supervisor's um, permission or supervisor's support, you apply and then try to get admission or try to complete, not admission, but try to complete your admissions application by the 11th of January, 2023. So by this date, you must have put in an application and then you get an application number, your applicant ID number. So what do you do with this number? With this number, you move down to apply for the scholarship. This Southeastern Network of Social Scientists, I think that's the full meaning. Then you go to the portal and apply here for the scholarship. So this is the portal. You create an account and apply for the scholarship. Most of the documents will be asked to submit here, documents you also used for the PhD admissions in the first place. So you just probably recycle those documents and put them here as well. So here it says, enter your basic details of application and things, referees and things like that. Usually things you've already done for your previous um, course application. And for the scholarship, it closes um, on January the 20th, 2023. So where admissions close, on the 11th of January, the scholarship application closes the 20th of January. There are lots of bits of info here on how to apply. And by spring, that's by maybe March, April, May, the results will be out on whether you got in or not. Hopefully you got in. So we're back to the eligibility criteria up here. And you can read that on your own. and. As you can see, we, we are back now to the funding. Uh, this is open to both UK and international applicants. And the University of Reading will cover the difference between international fees and domestic fees. So you wouldn't have to pay anything. Applications from underrepresented groups are encouraged. That's good. So these are the different pathways or the different courses eligible for this scholarship. You can see business management here. There's also a contact person you can ask for that questions about the scholarship. Usually, if you're interested in one of these courses, you go to the course page, 
read what their research is all about and look for supervisors in that department. See what their specialties are and see if you can find somebody in that department that can um, supervise you. So this is um, business management. This is the next one is development studies. The same thing. Look at the contact persons, the contact professors. Look at their research, their areas of interest. And get um, aware of what they're doing. Get intimated on what they're doing. And then send in an application. Economics is also here. So that's economics department. This is education, human geography, linguistics, politics and international studies. That's where I come in here. That is my course. So if I were interested or if I were... Uh, a prospective PhD student, I would have just contacted this department, you know, read through the instructions, their areas of strengths and everything, and try to find somebody there who would supervise my research. And if I had questions, I would contact Dr. Allen for further clarification. So that we have psychology, social legal studies, and there's actually a postdoc opportunity as well, in case there's somebody here watching it for... <laughs> Um, a, a postdoc applicant also watching this video. There's also something for here, by the way. But in case your course is not here, so these are majorly social science courses. You can see law, linguistic, politics, education, economics, development studies, and so on and so forth. In case your course is not here, not to worry. I will take you to another database of scholarships still at the University of Reading. And um, these are for different departments. You can see engineering, you can see geography and the rest of them. But make sure you check the availability here, whether it's available for international students or just UK and Ireland students. Like these, um, the first three here are for UK home students and Ireland students. And then you check for those open to applicants worldwide, like this one open worldwide. This is open to those from China. This one is open to international applicants. So this is nice. All disciplines, you can see the date here, 9th of January. So you can check that out as well and see what it covers and whether it's a fully funded scholarship or not. From what is written here, it's actually fully funded. You can see subsistence grants and you get a minimum of over 17,000 pounds international fees and 1000 pounds in training and development allowance so this is great so read closely and see the eligible departments the eligible um courses as well so you can see here that um, covers areas of science life sciences social sciences arts humanities and the business school as well so several departments are covered here. This opportunity was announced in October. So in case you're interested, please, please take advantage of this and apply as soon as you can, as soon as you can. Of course, there are other opportunities here. Look for those open to applicants worldwide. This was the one we looked at earlier, the ESRC. So this is it. There's yet another one, the AHRC also open to international students, similar to the ESRC. Lots of opportunities here, guys, lots of opportunities. You can see the lengthy list, and hopefully your course is funded by at least one of these numerous, generous scholarships. So this is the AHRC. Also quite similar to what we've seen initially but this is for the humanities as well. I think departments in the humanities. And then you can see the funding as well. Stipend, tuition fees. And also check if the university will be funding the difference. Here, the difference between the UK home fees and international fees will be covered by the University of Reading. So they've also got you covered here. You have no problem at all. So guys, what are you waiting for? Just start applying as soon as possible. These are incredibly generous opportunities. And you also find out whether you can apply directly with the BSc um, to a PhD as we saw in the ESRC funding. 
So before we go, I'd like to show you the English language requirements. I think I have it somewhere here. Yes, the English language requirements. So these are the normal traditional exams, the IELTS and the TOEFL and things like that. However, if you scroll down a little, you see all the accepted tests. And I was delighted to find out that some tests taken, for instance, in my home country, Nigeria, are also accepted. So just scroll down a little. And for instance, this exam, NECO. NECO is one of the tests you take after secondary school, one of the senior secondary school certificate examination. So NECO is accepted here. That's good. And if you scroll down a little, you also see YX. This is another test, very popular in West Africa. I think it's the West um, African Examination Council. So if you take the YX as well, you can submit your YX certificate in lieu for um, one of these English language tests. So the other countries here and what they accept, the certificates they accept from other countries. So check and see how you can get exemptions for your own country. Or if you've taken the test already, why not also put it forward? And I hope this was useful, guys. You can see you can move directly from a BSc to a PhD with this ESRC scholarship. And if your course is not here, of course, you can check the database that we looked at together and see these numerous opportunities. And as usual, we cannot wait to celebrate you. There are numerous opportunities already on this channel. So make sure you catch at least one. And by this time next year, you'll be here in the UK or in any other part of the world enjoying your postgraduate studies. So bye-bye for now, and I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Don't forget to subscribe.